Just how great is it when even the flippin' trees in this game can bring us a topic or two that's hard to beat? And while we've had our fun with what you see before you, and then some, I can't in good conscience continue to ignore their interdimensional brethren here. Palm cones. Yeah, sure, they're pretty straightforward, but the nuances they do have are of note, so best prepare your boats. For you see, nothing you'll see today will be possible without a trip to Don't Starve Together's newest landmass, the Moon Key Island. Now, there is an argument to be made about the thing generating nearby Pearl's own place, but that's really only a coincidence in most cases. The island is also known to be right off the edge of the world, and that isn't a coincidence, mind. Find it, sail a bit inside the border, and you should find the thing relatively easily, actually. And if you happen to encounter a pirate raid along the way, you'll know you're very close. Closer still if said raids are occurring more frequently. So make notes. Thankfully, though, all of that is gonna be the hard part, as we are talking trees after all. That said, natural palm cones should dot the island pretty well, and they do actually get well interesting very quickly. Chopping them down will be all the same as any other tree in this game for the most part, but as you can see, even small palm cones drop more logs than evergreens. Move on up in the world to medium palm cone trees, and that trend will continue, not only for the initial felling, but now even their stumps are going to start providing two additional logs to boot. And finally, large palm cone trees won't actually up our log counts like before, but they will drop the very two pieces of exclusively loot that we're looking for today. Palm cone sprouts and palm cone scales. So let's discuss. Obviously, palm cone sprouts are sprouts that can be planted wherever we please to help grow our very own palm cone trees. Growth cycles for the things won't really win any prizes for being unique, however, as they'll follow the typical rules for all four of their stages. Perhaps they'll be a bit faster than evergreens overall, but I would still expect a two to four day timer throughout the entire process. No, no. Oh no, palm cones don't separate themselves in their growth, they do so in how they're grown and with what they eventually drop. And to expand on the former, we need to actually return to the island to briefly mention my new favorite toy in this game, the unnatural portal. This tear in space and time spits out all sorts of amazing loot every 15 seconds or so, and 9.4% of the time, said loot is gonna be one palm cone sprout, meaning this portal here is one of the only ways to renew what's coming next. And if you need to do so fast, then let us remember how Moon Gleams will actually trigger the thing's daily event at will that just so happens to result in two palm cone sprouts guaranteed if you do so please. Not bad for a tree, eh? And it only gets better from here, believe it or not. If you've got the bananas for Moon Key Queen trading, that is. Folks, we're gonna need some blueprints to help round out the day, and this very chimp chick is who's gonna give it to us as long as we're not wonky or have some accursed trinkets within our inventories. And what exactly are these blueprints for, you ask? Well, that would be for the cannon kits, cannon balls themselves, docks, and dock pilings here. The latter being pure decor, mind, so don't even bother. Go get them, and at the cost of four boards, one cut stone, two bee stingers, and one palm cone scale, we'll be able to create four docks per craft that will open the door to land bridges over water, everyone. It's pretty darn useful stuff. Now, Theoretically speaking, it might be possible to bridge most anywhere in this game. As while it is true that docks only work in coastal waters, world generations kind of get a little wonky here and there and throw us a bone every once in a while, so who knows? Just don't go counting on the fact that every world you create is going to be able to have every single thing connected by a dock. What you can count on, however, is the lovely ability to build on docks, meaning dock-based bases are indeed a possibility. Be mindful though, turfing docks is not yet a feature, which also excludes any farming you might think you want to do with these things. Also be very aware of the incredible danger of building on docks in the first place, as if a set of docks loses all of its connections to land, they will all collapse. And that is a lot of loot gone in more ways than one. Yes, docks have durability. 
300 health to be exact, and can be damaged by boats and explosions at the end of the day. And no, this mechanic cannot open the door to being used to cheese certain bosses in case you are wondering. So again, don't go wasting all those resources to make the docks, only to waste all the resources destroying the docks. But from practical to deadly, we need to talk a palm cone scale second use, cannon kits. Thing is though, cannons are bloody worthless without cannonballs, so you'll also have to know how to make and use these, yes. And while two cut stone and one gunpowder go into creating four cannonballs per craft, where we stand when we go to fire these suckers matters most in the end. The direction we are facing when looking to aim and fire will literally be the direction that we aim and fire these cannons in, meaning yes, cannons can shoot in all directions. They can also be loaded from our inventories for rapid fire capabilities, so make note there too, as you might need it. But you know what I need? Someone to teach me how to bloody use these damn things, as I swear to you, I do not understand them. A loaded cannon is meant to deal 200 direct damage to anything it hits, with an added 120 splash damage that is very capable of hurting the primary target too, for a total of 320 damage per shot, however I'd never get both. Ever. But oh well, no real loss in my mind, as I actually find cannons to be better when used practically. Be it for the ability to propel stuff, up a root kelp for later transplanting, which is actually kinda huge, kill puffins, and slaughter fish schools of course. It's all your choice. But to wrap up this topic comes the one and only use for both docks and cannons in my own mind, Wickerbottom's fish farm. Summon endless schools in a contained pond made by you and your own docks, fire a cannon shot or two, and then reap the fishy rewards over and over and over again, just as long as you have more angler guides to read, without ever needing to actually fish yourself. Yup, Wickerbottom is still a goddess. Jokes aside though, two last notes for realsies. No, even if they are wood materials, palm cone scales cannot be used to repair boats for whatever reason. And yes, battle paddles can now be deconstructed to drop a palm cone scale, so I guess there is actually two sources of the stuff at the end of the day. But there you have everyone, a surprisingly deep look at palm cone trees and palm cone scales within Don't Starve Together. So get to sailing, sprouting, and space time jumping folks. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.